It was a beautiful Monday morning when a scientist, or I should say a biologist, was walking down the street just to reach his office or his lab. And suddenly he saw a spaceship in the sky. And to his surprise, it landed just in front of him. He was so confused and scared, but uh, in no time, a friendly alien got down from the spaceship. He seemed very harmless and he had just one question for this human he saw for the first time. How many different life forms are there on this planet? As I landed, I could see some on the ground, I could see some flying, I could see some walking. So how many different life forms are there on the earth? And the biologist had no answer. Well, for a biologist, it was kind of embarrassing, right? Because this is the most basic question anyone could ask about life. But again, it's not that they are not trying. Because uh, considering the total land area and the total life forms that's present on our planet Earth, uh, counting all of them is not a child's play, right? Because uh, just imagine, life exists right from top of the mountain ranges to the bottom of the deepest of sea. And even in places where human survival is not possible. So counting all of those is definitely a difficult task to do. At least we can all agree on that, right? So this helpless, embarrassed scientist, just for the sake of answering the alien, thought of telling him about IUCN. So the scientist told the alien that, hey, look, we are human beings and we have brains and we are the most intelligent creatures on this planet Earth. And we have created something called IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, that releases a book called the Red Data Book. And in 2004, the book said that we have till now successfully discovered and documented a little more than 1.5 million different species. Okay, with this answer from the scientist, the alien flew back to his own planet. All right, now coming back to the data of IUCN from 2004, this is a data that talks about the known and discovered species. Now, we have no clue how many there are in the wild that are yet to be discovered that call this earth their home. So researchers all over the world started coming up with their own estimates. And uh, the wild part was the estimates would range somewhere from 20 million to 50 million. So the, the estimates were all over the place until Robert May came into the picture. Robert May was a leading mathematical ecologist and was known for his extraordinarily quick analytical brain. And he, based on the recorded data of species at that time, made an estimate that there could be somewhere around 7 million species on this planet. And as his way of estimation seemed convincing to a lot of scientists, most of them agreed with this 7 million estimate. But if Robert May was true with his 7 million number, then looking at the IUCN data, which is just 1.5 million, we have not yet traveled half the road, right? But there is some good news. With the increase of internet usage in the past 20-25 years, scientists are now able to communicate easily. They are able to share their findings and research really quick. And more and more number of species are being discovered each year. Now, just out of curiosity, I looked up for species that are discovered this year, uh, till August 2022. And I found out that the world's largest lily was discovered only this year. And it was discovered in Bolivia. Then a new species of millipede was discovered in USA and it was named after Taylor Swift. Uh, it is named as Neneria swifti. And then a frog was discovered this year called the Tepeir frog in Peru. But this frog is very famous in social media as the chocolate frog from Harry Potter. Interesting, right? Now, you can always Google about new discoveries. And just to boost your curiosity, there are some even discovered from India this year. So go Google up and find out what are those. All right. Now, these interesting new discoveries are not important for exams. On the flip side, what's important is sadly not very interesting. Well, the examiner expects us to remember certain data given by the IUCN. Okay, so talking about data, 
Out of all the species recorded by IUCN, 70% are animals. And even among animals, if we talk about invertebrates only, the most species-rich taxonomic group is the class insecta. And it's probably not surprising, right? Uh, if I may ask you, when was your last encounter with an insect? You would say probably a few minutes ago with a mosquito or something. Or maybe you have left your food uncovered so there were a lot of flies on top of it. So literally you don't even have to step out of your home to encounter an insect. It is so much in abundance everywhere. So next after insects, the highest percentage is occupied by the mollusks, uh, popular for their slimy soft bodies. And here is a snail as an example. Now after the mollusks, we have the crustaceans, for example the lobsters. Or the crabs and the rest part is occupied by the other classes of invertebrates all right now let's move on to vertebrates and you will see that 50 percent of the vertebrates are fishes now again it's not surprising right because water covers the maximum area on our planet and land is just 29 percent so having a great diversity in the water world is not surprising now, after fishes, we have birds, there is a pigeon, for example, and reptiles. So, here is a turtle. Now, it is said that birds and reptiles got almost the same duration to evolve. And therefore, it can be possible that they have almost similar number of varieties. Moving ahead, we have mammals and amphibians. Now, talking about amphibians, they are found near freshwater. And we know that most of the world water cover is marine. And uh, therefore, uh, the amphibian's location is restricted only to few places, uh, places that have very high rainfall. So that, that can be a reason that lower variety of amphibians are discovered till now. And then we have mammals that also share similar percentage with amphibians on the pie chart. So this was all about the discovered animals. Now let's talk about the discovered plants. So out of the total discovered species, plant constitute 22%. And under the plants, the maximum percentage is of fungi. Now in the latest system of classification, fungi is not included under the plant kingdom. But again, if we look back, uh, if we consider the two system of classification, their fungi was included in plants, right? So uh, that is why maybe the IUCN decided to keep fungi here. Now after fungi, the highest percentage is of angiosperms, that is the flowering plants. And after angiosperm, we have the algae. Right after algae, the highest percentage on the pie chart is occupied by mosses, and fawns and its allies. And last, a very small portion on the pie chart is occupied by lichen. Okay, now you may think, hey, where is gymnosperm? We have read about gymnosperm in plant kingdom, but we can't see it uh, on this pie chart. Well, the reason could be the very less identified species of gymnosperm. It is so low that it could not even uh, secure its position into this pie chart. On the other hand, the diversity of fungi is so huge that it alone is more than the total vertebrate species diversity. And apart from gymnosperm, if you have observed, we have also not spoken about bacteria or prokaryotes in general. And this is because the current system of classification is not suitable for it. And now that we are talking about bacteria and microorganisms, let me tell you a fun fact. Do you know that we have more microorganisms inside our body than, than human cells? Yes, microorganisms outnumber human cells by 10 to 1. So there is a wide variety already within a single human body. And now we are talking about the diversity in the entire world. So it's almost like counting sand on a beach on a windy day. And also these microorganisms or bacteria, they differ from another species um, in a very slight manner. Distinguishing them is also a difficult task. And most of them are also difficult to culture in a lab. So considering all that, prokaryotes are omitted from this listing or estimation. 
Okay, and the rest 8% of the discovered species are the ones which are not mentioned in this pie chart. Alright, so this was about the species diversity that is found in the entire world. Okay, now it's time we focus our discussion to a small piece of land in this entire world, which is India. Now, why is India so important? Well, this is because India is one of the 17 mega biodiverse countries in the world. Wonderful. But what are the conditions that makes a country biodiverse? Well, there are so many, but uh, there are two basic conditions. First among them is that the country should have at least 5,000 species of endemic plants. Endemic as in the plants that are found only there and nowhere else in the world. And the next is the country should have a good marine cover around its borders. So let me write that it should have marine life, abundant marine life around it. And India has those. Now, uh, if we talk about the total land area, India constitutes just 2.4% of the total land area uh, of this earth. And despite its small land area, a whooping 8.1% of total global species diversity call India their home. Wonderful, right? Now let's talk about the discovered and documented species of India. So when it comes to plants, we have around 45,000 species discovered and described from India. And when it comes to animals, uh, our country has documented around 90,000 different species. How wonderful is that? But wait, if we agree on what Robert May's estimate was, then these numbers for a country like India is just the tip of an iceberg. Uh, if, if we consider his estimates, India is yet to discover another 1 lakh plant species and, uh, and around 3 lakh animal species more. So we have a long way to go, right? But considering the limited number of scientists that our world has, do you think we can ever reach there? Well, many species will go extinct even before we discover and document them. That's sad, right? So can we do something about it? The answer is yes. If you are curious enough and you want to contribute towards the discovery of new species now, you can definitely do that. In this age of internet, which is making the world a smaller place, uh, there are a lot of websites in which you can upload information. Mm, let me show you one among them, which is called the iNaturalist. Uh, and this is how it works. If you see something which is weird or new to you, you can just click a picture and upload it to iNaturalist. There are a lot of scientists or taxonomists there. They can look at your picture and the location in which this picture was taken. And then you can, you can discuss about that picture. If it is an already discovered species, then they will inform you about that. That way you will enhance your knowledge. And if it is something which is not yet discovered, wow, you may end up discovering a new species. Or maybe save an endangered species from extinction. How great is that? So go share it with your friends or a younger sibling who would love to do this with you. And I hope you start looking at nature with more curiosity now. All the best.